to the shots of Uspers um, could be presented by Pat Goggins who is head of Uspers University in Travel. Uh, the panel members will be called that this was part of the work program we took uh, last year and uh, this is a report back from University Travel um, to look at or to answer some of the recommendations on um, the recommendations actually which are brought out in pages uh, 8 to 10 of the packs. Um, so those are the recommendations on the Mersey Travels um, response to each of those. Just for uh, your information as well, um, I've presented these recommendations back to the Mersey Travel Committee in September and the Mersey Travel Committee um, resolved to endorse the responses uh, to approve those responses to come to you um, today and also that the Mersey Travel Committee will receive further updates on the implementation of the recommendations and the actions. Um, the recommendations themselves are broadly grouped into four areas. Uh, so those, those four are cost of fares, uh, information about fares, improved bus flow across the Liverpool City region, and also future opportunities, including legislation and the bus services bill. But I think just before I get into those recommendations, and the responses. I think it's just important to point out the context where, where we are where we are now in terms of, um, of these responses. Uh, the, the context is that we now have a, a city region bus strategy, which was approved by the combined authority back in April of this year. The fares is one of the strategic themes um, within the bus strategy. And um, we've also got a recently signed uh, bus alliance, which is in uh, a partnership agreement between ourselves and uh, initially a reaper and stagecoach, but which we hope uh, other operators um, will sign up to in time. And also we're currently assessing tenders to support uh, a wide ranging piece of work, assessment of options and business case in line with uh, the options that are emerging from the bus services bill. So I think it's just important to kind of set the context for, uh, for, for where we are in, in bus at the moment. So getting on to the, uh, the recommendations and, and the responses, and the first theme um, being cost, cost of fares. First recommendation to reduce supported fares to uh, analyse cost and benefit of introducing short distance fares and supported services. As I've just mentioned, one of the key uh, strategic themes within our bus strategy is offering value for money and affordable uh, ticketing on the bus. So what we're proposing here is that rather than carry out the, uh, a, what would be actually quite a small scale review of supported fares, which are only, supported bus services only make up around 15% around of, uh, of, of the whole bus market. What we propose is actually a more wide ranging exercise within that assessment of options that I just talked about in relation to the bus services bill. Uh, that will give a, a much more comprehensive um, review of uh, fare structures and optimal fare structures for bus passengers in the city region. And that assessment is, uh, is about, to, uh, about to commence. Uh, so the next recommendation is to continue to develop a range of tickets that include an all operator car and other innovations. Um, well, the introduction of tickets such as that, uh, an operator car and a multi operator day ticket, those uh, are now part of our Walrus Smart Ticketing Programme which is, again is closely linked to the Bus Alliance. A multi-operator day ticket is actually due to be launched in January of next year, so only, uh, only three or so months away. 
and a Carne version of, of that product, uh, these, these plants are followed. So those are, are actions that are very much being progressed now. Take um, the next two together, actually two from, from different sections. One to raise through the Alliance a trial at a key centre, uh, on which incorporates short distance fares, and also progress on a short, from, this is from the future opportunities section, progress on short distance trials to be shared amongst Alliance uh, members. There is actually already an example of a short distance fare within the city region in the Southport area, so what we propose to do in respect of that is, um, is to raise the prospect of some uh, analysis on a bilateral basis with Areva, who are the bus operator that has that particular fare. But I think just within that it's important to note that our ability to then discuss the results of that either through the Alliance or through any other multi-operator forum is quite limited because of competition law, which is governed by the Competition and Markets Authority. But it is something we do intend to progress um, with a uh, The next theme of recommendations is uh, information about fares. So the first uh, recommendation, ensure that emerging bus strategy includes information on fares as a key element. But as I've mentioned, since the scrutiny report was published, the uh, bus strategy has been approved by the combined authority and one of the strategic themes within that is to improve customer experience off bus with the objective of enhancing information provision to enhance customers' confidence in, uh, in the bus. And within that, again, the strategy stresses the importance of digital and web development to, to, to this and that very much links to the following two recommendations which are to develop the modes of travel website and apps to incorporate fare information uh, on point-to-point -point fares, and also task the Alliance Customer Experience Worksheet to develop point-to-point -point fares as part of its journey planner uh, as a long-term development. So there are actually a number of actions in relation to, um, to these recommendations. Firstly, as part of the bus services bill, um, the open data provisions will open the market really to the development of, uh, of apps and uh, of that open data from, from ourselves and from operators, uh, really to develop, uh, to be used by third parties to meet customer demands, both on journey planning and also, uh, also linked to fares. Um, a refresh of the Mersey Travel uh, website due to take place during 2016-17. An element of this refresh is to, be, to provide uh, better information on bus fares to, uh, to customers. As part of our smart ticketing um, work stream, which again is closely linked to the Bus Alliance, there's going to be a new Walrus uh, web portal which will enable customers clearly to see prices and then to purchase uh, online, both operator and Mersey Travel prepaid, prepaid uh, smart products online. And again, since the scrutiny uh, committee's report was published, or even stagecoach of in a more consistent and simplified uh, fare structure um, across Merseyside and the focus uh, at least in the short term is going to be on promoting that uh, flat fare as you know supporting bus services already have um, a flat fare approach. Um, the next recommendation is for the Alliance to develop a strategy to publicise fares between key centres um, by operator uh, including shelters um, and, and timetables. Well, within, within that theme, it's, it clearly Mersey Travel doesn't have control over bus fares, but we do continue to raise the importance of value for money um, for, for fares with uh, bus operators. And as I've just mentioned, in line with this, and also in line with our bus strategy uh, and in support of the Alliance's aims, or even stagecoach of uh, taking the decision to implement uh, a more consistent flat fare structure across the Merseyside area. And that approach has um, significant the cost of bus travel for certainly some residents in the city region, particularly uh, residents in St Helens in, on the Wirral and also in parts of Sefton where a, flat fare, um, a new flat fare structure has been introduced. And because of those actions and other actions that we're taking, what we're doing is reducing the sheer volume of different fares that are available um, to, to customers. And what that does is um, it, uh, it really increases the potential for, um, for better promoting fares because there are fewer of them to, uh, to promote if you like. So we intend now to take that forward through the customer 
have uh, functionality and reliability work stream, again, within the alliance, and that's tasked with firstly identifying the issues relating to bus functionality, and then coordinating what can be done, the art of the possible, if you like, with development and highway authority, and then delivering schemes, again, in conjunction with um, the relevant districts. And lastly, in terms of this recommendation, um, and again, since the scrutiny committee um, report was published, the key route network has been, uh, has been defined and is aligned with um, the, the key bus network as well. Uh, and we've, the, key, the lead officer for the key route network also sits on, uh, now sits on the programme board for the bus alliance. So we, we've created a clear link there between the key route network and the ongoing work now for the bus alliance in improving punctuality and reliability. And the final um, theme of recommendations was future opportunities, including legislative background that buses built. The first recommendation was to continue to work with transport focus to influence their, um, their work. Um, the first thing to say is that transport folks are now very much embedded within, uh, within the bus alliance. Their passenger director actually now sits on our bus uh, alliance board. So again, we now, have, as with the KRM, we now have a clear link between transport focus and the work of the bus alliance. And we will also be using the value for money indicators within the transport focus. Um, annual bus survey as an independent measure of success of the Alliance in terms of people's perceptions around value for money in particular. Uh, next was that smaller operators should be encouraged to join uh, the Bus Alliance. This is something that we um, strongly would welcome. Um, we, we truly believe that the Alliance will be stronger the more operators uh, join it and align with, uh, align with its aims. Um, the voluntary partnership agreement, which is the legal agreement for the Bus Alliance, makes um, specific reference to and also caters for smaller operators joining the Bus Alliance um, at, at, at some point in the future. Um, we're, um, we're as both travel taking active steps through the meetings we have with smaller operators and the various forums we have with smaller operators to encourage them to, um, to, to join the Bus Alliance. Uh, we've also been careful within the alliance agreement itself that the, if you like, the minimum standards within um, the agreement are too onerous that smaller operators wouldn't practically be able to uh, to join. And so we've made sure that the uh, although operators will need to kind of step up and get behind the commitments, it's it's not an unrealistic um, requirement for uh, for smaller operators. And the last recommendation is that the progress of the bus bill to be kept under review and consultation responded to. Also, the relevant powers be used regarding affordable fares. A couple of actions on that. Firstly, we've been working very closely, uh, both directly but also as a member of the urban transport group of, of city regions. And we've worked very closely with the Department of Transport as the bill has been, um, has been developed. That work uh, very much continues. Um, we also submitted evidence to the Transport Select Committee um, require, um, inquiry on the bus services bill and uh, Mercy Travel's interim chief executive was also given oral evidence to the Transport Select Committee in, in recent weeks. So we were very much as an organisation engaged in, in that process. Um, the other action is that the options within the bus services bill um, given to the City Region Combined Authority around bus those are going to be fully assessed, as I mentioned at the start, um, over the next um, two years, in line with the business case um, that's been outlined and the requirements that have been outlined in the emerging uh, legislation, and further recommendations that we made um, in relation to that in due course. So that's really a brief uh, run through of the recommendations that the scrutiny um, panel made to us, our responses, which have been.
terms of the bus services bill, that's something that's been highlighted as if, like, one, of the, uh, one of the issues with it. I know that as, as an organisation, Mersey Travel, but also as part of the urban transport group, we've, we've been very clear that we don't agree with that element of, uh, of the bill, and I think various politicians are taking that, that forward. Thanks, Chair. So, firstly, in terms of standardised cars, um, outside of London, the local city region, in, in not the not too distant future, will be unique in that uh, we will have one card, uh, the Wars card, which will be the smart card for multimodal travel in, in the city region. One of the things we've agreed within the Bus Alliance is that um, Arriva will not be launching their own smart card. Stagecoach will be withdrawing their smart card and not issuing any more in the city region. And the Walrus card will be the platform, which will be, regardless of what mode you want to, uh, want to use to travel, whether that be ferry, whether that be bus, or whether that be rail, you'll be able to put your smart product onto, onto that card, which we, we think is a really, uh, is really good for, uh, for customers and give, gives customers real choice but also gives them simplicity as well around I know I need to carry one card rather than is it an Aviva stagecoach, Mersey Rail card, it's one, uh, one smart card. So that's that's something that we were very focused on in terms of um, in terms of the, the deal that we, we were able to strike with, with with the bus operators and, and that's now agreed and in being the action. That's that's from now. So our, our smart our smart ticketing program is is in place now. The first, as I mentioned earlier, the first deliverable of that is in January, which is uh, a, a one day multi operator bus ticket, which doesn't exist at the moment. So at the moment, if you want to travel on different operators just on one day, you you need to buy a different ticket. That will that will change uh, from January, and we have a program over around three years to. Uh, to develop those multi-operator tickets and the smart element of that. Just on your second point, which um, which is is an interesting one, I think it kind of refers to, to passenger rights, if you like. And the, the, the bus services bill is a good indicator, actually, of where the industry is with that. So if you, if you are at a, a railway station, pretty much every railway station in the country has the performance 
analysis of the train operators that serve that station published in a, in a table, in a graph, however you want it. It's, you can access fairly easily as a rail passenger the performance of your rail company. You can scrutinize that and you can kind of base your, your ability to get compensation for poor performance or otherwise on that. And clearly different operators have different mechanisms for that. Some do that on a particular journey basis and others do that on a, uh, the, the overall performance, if you like, of, of, of a service um, over time. The bus industry at the moment, there is no um, requirement for bus operators to publish their performance data and quite simply they don't. So that data is not freely available and bus operators at the moment choose not to, not to publish it. One of the three elements of the buses bill, one is to, um, to make franchises simpler for rail combined authorities, another is to develop enhanced partnerships, which may need to be more in partnership, and the third element, as I mentioned, is, is open data. So one of, the, one of the key parts of the buses bill will be around uh, requiring bus operators to publish the performance of their services, and I think that will start the conversation, if you like, around um, things like compensation for season tickets for, for bus passengers. And it's, at the moment, it, the way that the industry is, it's an impossibility to deliver, I think, what you, um, what you say, but I think when the, um, when the open data provisions of the bill uh, enacted and there is much more transparency, transparency around the performance of bus operators. I think that will do two things. I think one, it will start to put pressure on uh, highways authorities and people like that to make sure that buses are performing um, well and to their optimum. But also, I think it will start uh, it will start to put more pressure on bus operators to live up to the expectations of their customers and clearly compensation.
and change articulate a lot of the kind of challenges around it to, to, to be quite honest and, uh, and you're right and the same, same applies for airlines and rail companies I guess until you're compelled to do something like that you, you, you're probably not going to do it I think where we are now our focus is, is much more around what can what can we do to actually improve the performance of the, the bus companies and the bus operators so that people are getting quicker journeys and, and more reliable journeys. We've set some quite uh, tough targets around that in terms of uh, in terms of the bus alliance. Our bus strategy talks about making journeys more punctual, more reliable and and quicker. So if you like that's where our focus is um, at the moment. And certainly bus companies want to deliver more reliable journeys uh, for, for people. So that that's that's where we are at the moment. As I say the open data provisions are
was that greater ultimately joining that uh, that bus alliance. We want to significantly increase uh, improve the customer experience and see significant passenger growth uh, on the network through the work that that alliance is doing. And that that growth, we come back to growth is the thing that we want to see. It's the fundamental because everything else kind of comes from uh, comes from and hangs off of growth. So that's that's the big picture if you like for for bus. And there's a services bill as well, so that, um, as, I, as I touched on, talks about uh, bus franchising and enhanced partnership, and what we've done is start a piece of work which will be a significant and lengthy piece of work, and we're, we're talking about in two years here, looking at all of the options that the bus services bill presents to us as a city region, and that will, at the end of it, come out with some recommendations about how we start to take challenges around uh, around bus so I guess if you like the fairest the fairest system uh, would be that you pay per mile for example for a bus journey so that if you if you had um, a 10 p a mile journey if you did a mile that cost you 10 p you did 10 miles that cost you cost you a pound that's probably the most fair and democratic way of uh, of, of, of traveling <coughs> bus but what that does it creates a very complicated structure then for people and people can't understand what um, what they're supposed to be paying it, it, it creates a difficulty so what you need to do is kind of balance those those two things out and we we believe uh, as, as we've looked at it that a flat, a, a flat fare structure is the simplest and um, the simplest way of, um, of, of delivering um, delivering bus fares is what our supported fare is what London does as an example, um, and the, the crucial element within that clearly is making sure that that flat fare is is, is fair for people. But we do recognise what the, what the committee said as well around the short hop fares, and that's why um, that's why we would go approach or even on a bilateral basis and do some. both on the rail network and, uh, and on bus network and ferries. 
was to talk about um, priority and, and that being one of the, is, is priority kind of the answer? Uh, what I'd say is I think we've, we've kind of moved on a little bit from just talking about bus lanes and, and priority to, to being much more defined about what's, what's needed. So we've been doing a lot of work over to really start to get under the skin of what the issues are on, on the highway. And the solutions to those issues could be a whole range of things. So we're, we're currently looking at, um, at things like traffic signal priority, the buses linked to the RTI system. So technology now is, is intelligent enough that a traffic signal could know that a bus is running late and will turn green to let that through. Or it, likewise, it could know that it's running early and turn red to stop it carrying on running early. So traffic signals now can be that intelligent and those are some of the things that we're starting to look at. So clearly bus lanes are a very visible kind of demonstration of priority but they're, a, they're, they're kind of a, they're not an intelligent solution either. So it's about finding in conjunction with the districts what the appropriate measures are to make sure that we can speed up bus journeys but also that we can provide consistency in journey time because that that lack of consistency and if you like variability in running time is one of the key challenges that the bus industry faces if you know that a bus journey is always going to take you half an hour then that's great you've got to try and you've got to do two challenges one you've got to make sure it's half an hour every time but also you've got to make you've got to look at can we make that half an hour 25 minutes or 20 minutes and if you like those are those are the challenges for the industry that we've got to address through the key route network and with our district partners as well. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a, a couple of points I wanted to raise and, and get a bit of feedback on. Um, thanks for the report. Uh, in regards to uh, Walrus and you're talking about being a truly smart system, I uh, just wanted to see how um, advanced that will be in that will it be a compatible smartphones, um, being able to use the near field contact NFC technology um, because a lot of the time we talk about using all these different cards um, then I find I don't use them because I have too many and they get blanked out by the fact that I can use my phone for nearly everything else except for the one that's redundant and hasn't actually thought about moving forward and being ahead of uh, the game when it comes to technology. Uh, however, it is good to hear that we will be unique outside of London. Um, I like to see Merseyside being ahead. Um, the other point that I wanted to raise is about access and equality. Um, I have raised this in the relevant forums uh, in regards to making sure it is reported correctly. Um, but still, uh, within the community groups that I'm involved in and the people I speak to, um, too often I'm hearing mothers and fathers not being able to get on buses because of prams. Um, and also a very serious issue which has been raised with the police is where um, there's been racial discrimination in regards to how people can get on a bus saying that they have too many bags or that they um, can't get on this bus because it's stopping at the next stop when it's clearly not. And as I say, I have raised them in the right areas but I feel it's correct that I bring this back to you and ask about the, the types of, um, uh, or the parameters that you have in place to, to stop this and further prevent this from happening again and they have been raised through with Mersey, Mersey Travel previously um, and then moving on from that the other one is, is that the rules that do get made up because in that area um, of saying you have too many bags or something um, my daughter was stopped from getting on a bus because she had a balloon yet there's no rules anywhere to tell me that a balloon stops her from getting on the bus I can think of other reasons, but you know, when it comes to these things, I think unless the rules are displayed, then, then they shouldn't be getting enforced. Thank you. Okay, uh, thanks, thanks for those questions. Uh, I think firstly on, on Wars, we kind of touched on in the, in the previous answer really, Wars has its, its limitations, and it, I think you've got to treat Wars and other things such as smartphones and contacts almost as separate, separate entities. So, um, so I know Arif, for example, have a um, ticket option where you can buy a ticket on, on an app on, on a smartphone and show that to the driver and that's uh, and, and actually 
ticket. And we know for a, a lot of people that sort of thing is actually much more convenient than, um, than, than a card. Only having one card is one of the things that we were um, that we were very conscious of. We, we didn't want lots of different people to have lots of different smart cards and to, to try and find the right one for, uh, for that journey. So I think we made progress in simplifying things for people. But I think I think you make you make a good point that things like smartphone technology, near field communication, that Apple Pay, those sorts of things are that's what customers expect now, particularly people who have a choice around uh, around which which mode to use. That's the sort of expectation that people